something to be going on with. <coughs> this will do you for the for the journey, and then when you get back. What is it, Doctor? Hey? The stuff you're giving me. Oh, it's, um, it's linked to scogene. It's made from the same base as morphia, so don't take any more than I write on the bottle, will you? Uh, right, Doctor. I'll be careful. Thank you. <coughs> there you are. <coughs> Thank you, Doctor. Good night, you, Doctor. Good night. Doctor Finley would like to see you, Doctor. Well, later, later, gently. But I'm sorry, Doctor, but he says it is important. Uh, what is it, Doctor Finley? Is this bottle the same as it was when you put it back? No, what bottle? This is Parker's tablet. Of course, why? You haven't touched it since. I had no occasion to. No, neither have I. Well, you explain yourself, Doctor. Well, I've counted these tablets twice. I'm afraid Mrs. Parker's death wasn't quite as straightforward as would appear. Are you suggesting there's some connection between these yes, tablets? Yes, I am. I can only suppose you've taken leave of your senses. What are you suggesting? An overdose? Do you imagine I cannot uh, tell the difference between morphine poisoning and pneumonia? Well, she had pneumonia, all right. Dr. Cameron, Mrs. Parker was on... Morphia for quite a long time. Let me ask you, suppose the tablets were abruptly withdrawn, what would happen? Yes, that's right. She would contract pneumonia, and in her weakened state, well, it would almost certainly kill her. Take two or three days? Yes, well, it was four days after my last visit that you were called out. Now, there aren't too few tablets in that bottle. There are twelve too many. Four tablets a day for three days were withheld. With hell? Yes. Now, Mr. Parker is a qualified pharmacist. He's got enough medical knowledge to know just what would happen. An interesting speculation. Speculation, my foot. Which is of no interest to either you or to me. Well, he brought about his wife's death, and it's of no interest to us. Uh, Mrs. Parker died of pneumonia. Yes, but in effect, he killed her. Of pneumonia, Dr. Finley? Deliberately induced. Well, so you believe. Now, the fact but is... even if you are right, it is a sin of omission, not commission. Oh, and you think that makes it all right? Uh, not only I wish you'd kept this to yourself. Well, I need your advice. About what? Well, what to do? Well, what can you do? Run to the police, tell them your suspicions, your suspicions, no more. Well, pretty well founded, though. Well, to ask them to open an investigation, to bring a charge of murder. But make no mistake, Dr. Finney, that's what it would mean. Murder, is that what you want? Do you seriously believe that's a logical charge for releasing a woman from useless agony? I can't just do nothing. That's all you can do. Nothing. You want my advice? My advice is this. I forget all about it. Hey. Finley, now, we haven't finished our conversation. I have nothing more to say. Janet, would you mind, please? Of course, Doctor. Uh, there's no occasion for you to leave, Janet. It's time I was seeing to the supper. Uh, there's no hurry. Will you pour me a glass of whiskey, please? Yes, And take one for yourself. All right. <clears throat> you want Janet's opinion as well? <laughs> Dr. Finley and I were discussing our experiences, Janet. How painful it is for a doctor when he has a patient whom he knows will die of considerable pain. And for whom he can do nothing. Like poor Mrs. Parker, Doctor. Well, uh, yes, perhaps, yes. Thank Dr. you. Finley, no, thank you. You see the position, Janet. A hopeless case for whom death uh, would come as a wonderful release, yet sometimes death will not come. Doctor, it must be a terrible thing. It is, it is. The patient sometimes asks. Is not that so, Dr. Finley? Aye. My, he will ask for release. When a doctor cannot cure, What's his duty? What do you think, Janet? Well, I'm sure you have an opinion. I just would not know, but to save the poor body from needless suffering. 
Yes, that's the position. What when the pain-killing drugs are beginning to lose their effect? What then? Then I suppose, Doctor. Yes? There is nothing left but to pray. Indeed. But consider what you are praying for. You are praying for death, which is inevitable to be advanced. But who is to be the instrument to bring that about? Can you permit anyone to have that responsibility? You see what ethical problems are caused by this situation, Janet. It's affecting every doctor many times in their lives. It's too deep for me, Doctor. I just do not know. Well, nor do I. I wish I did. There's an old saying, Thou shalt not kill, needst not strive officiously to keep alive. You know that one, Dr. Finney? Yes, but that doesn't cover the point that we were discussing in there. You mean that one amount to, to an act of omission rather than commission? Oh, I mean, it, it cannot be right to take a human life. Indeed. But do we know when life is over? Well, I would have thought that was obvious. Is it? I'd have had a case about 20 years ago, a man, an accident. The poor fellow's lungs were punctured. Great difficulty in breathing. He was in terrible pain. He could only possibly have lived for a couple of hours. When was his life over, Dr. Finney? When he finally expired, or two hours earlier, thus saving him that final torture. There was only one thing that man wanted of me. There was only one thing I could do for him. And what is right? and wrong in such sentences, Dr. Finley. It's not as clear-cut as you would imagine. 